Welcome to our seven acre farm in central Texas. We built everything on this abandoned land just four years ago, and today we're spilling all the details. When we purchased this land, we were a family of six from the Houston suburbs. Our mode of transportation, a minivan. And that was not going to cut it to get on this untouched property. So before we built anything, we needed access. The very first work we did was our driveway. In June, we began the heavy work of clearing space for our home. This crew cleared about half an acre in this wooded portion of the property so that when our house was on site, we would have privacy from the road, but enough room to garden and begin raising animals. When I say this property was untouched, I mean we needed to build everything from scratch. Water is essential for life. We used the trencher to dig a line through the roots and rocks and dirt so that we would have water flowing to our home and future animals. You ready? Oh, oh my, my God! Most folks living the country life these days fix up an old farmhouse or build a new stick built home or build a barnuminium. We went way out of the box. Can I show you how we converted a shed into a house? We had this vision before we left the city and I'm over the moon to look back at the skills we've learned through sweaty clothes and grimy jobs. Our building experience coming into this capped out at basic eighth grade woodshop skills. The square footage on our two decks is just over a thousand feet. After all the hours put in, we are working our way to earning our home builder merit badges for sure. We went with spray foam because it's the best bang for your buck insulation available. Plus fewer critters would make their home in our walls with this type of sealed off product. If you've been with us on this homestead adventure, you know the ceiling was a crisis of belief, meaning I believed it could happen and Bo, who did all the work on it, was pretty sure it wouldn't work. It's simply primed shiplap, tongue and groove, from the center of the ceiling out. This gives us 16 foot ceilings in the center of our home and completely transforms the feel from a shed into a cozy dwelling. Continuity kept this build as simple as possible. We chose one floor for the main living space and the kids' lofts. If you're keeping track, the Brotherton headcount was six when we got here, and that's gonna change by the end of this video. It's taken so much love to make this house a home. But we didn't move here just to stay inside. This was our adventure. The entire home is just over 800 square feet. It's no secret we built small to live big. The outdoors is where we spend most of our time. The compost bin made out of pallets is the easiest DIY we have ever done. Just stand them up, screw them together to create the walls, and fill it with all your kitchen scraps and brown material. Nothing goes to waste. We're making soil, y'all. And here is where we put it. These were standing raised beds that we brought from the city, and we transformed some of these cleared trees into biochar for the garden. Free wood chips from a local tree company also gave us base to help us build up our topsoil and decayed material for the rest of the garden that we had in the works. Free is amazing, especially when you can put it to good use right away, like these first cut boards from a sawmill that would become our next garden beds. When you think homesteading, the first thing you think of is animals. We got a dog, then rabbits, and went hard after our very first chickens. Is there anything cuter than a little fluffy nugget? Maybe a baby cow, but stay tuned for that. From eggs to hatching to grass, these birds have been a fantastic lesson about life and loss and growth for us. Our kids have been an integral part in raising our own food, but like the kids in shoes, these chicks outgrew their little tractor and needed a new home. Homesteaders need materials and friends. We have some amazing friends. Ben and Meg Holler were traveling to find their own property and stopped off at our place along their journey. These friends are serious can doers and their middle son left us with a lesson that I cling to daily. If you don't have what you need, use what you got. So we fixed up this modified chick shaw from a Justin Rhodes design and fenced in the chickens with an electric poultry netting. This keeps the chickens safe from predators and helps us collect eggs in one location each day. It took a minute, but that first egg finally came. And we learned that everyone around the property heard about it. If you're not okay with legless slithering things, look away for a moment. This fool is harmless and the chickens aren't at risk, but he sure did make a lunch of our eggs. We'll move on to happier things. 
Rabbits were a fantastic kickstart to homesteading when we were still in the city, and they thrived when they moved onto our seven acres where they could grow out on grass. We use their meat to feed our dogs and ourselves, and rabbit poop is nothing short of black gold for the garden. Instant fertilizer. It turns out that gardens have a lot of pests. Not just bugs, but gophers, and dogs, and imaginative children who love to make salads in their playhouses. So, up went the garden fence. We use landscape posts and cedar from our own property about six feet apart. There are lots of options for fencing. We use this cheaper welded wire because it'll never have animals pressing up against it and it easily keeps the chickens out. Most posts were able to be secured with dirt, but we secured the gate posts with a quick dry concrete. We used a lot of material from our own property or salvaged, like those culled boards I showed you earlier. But the big box stores are practically giving away damaged boards and are a great way to build a garden bed on the cheap. You can go fancy, but if you want to go fast and affordable, your beds do not have to be Pinterest perfect. They just need to hold soil and grow food. These cedar boards came with a deep discount and built the foundation for the veggies we would grow for literally years to come. There is no shame in whatever it takes to get your garden in the ground. Some purists insist on seeds. I insist on food. And these starts are from the big box stores and a local nursery. They're in our four by eight beds with fertilizer and mulch on top. And this turned out to be a thriving source of food for us that winter. Are there risks in building your home with very little experience? Yep. We went out of town and came home to water underneath our flooring. We realized that because we didn't put flooring under our refrigerator, rookie mistake, when the hose on the ice maker began leaking, we never noticed it seeping under the flooring and reaching across one half of our entire first floor of our home. Board by board, we removed the flooring and board by board, we had to replace and rebuild that floor. I feel very much like I've created a safe space. These are the lessons that can feel like a kick to the mouth. Somehow, there was no water damage and no mold due to the waterproof subflooring installed when our home was built. We insist on failing forward around here. So as soon as the weather began to get warm again, we were on to the next project. And friends, she was a doozy. By far, this water harvesting system is the largest project we have done to date. Expert gutter guys gave us the means to direct the water, but it had to go somewhere. Enter stage left, the shamu size water tanks. Two of them. These are 2,500 gallon tanks, totaling a capacity to hold 5,000 gallons of rainwater right here on our property. And would you believe that we have actually filled them up? We built a simple gravel foundation for the tanks and hired the help of our permaculture designer friend, Pete from Drought Proof Texas, to come out and help put the fittings together and make sure that we capture all the water possible from our massive roof. We could add an additional filter to make this potable and use it in our home. But for now, this water system goes to watering our garden and our animals. Remember that rhyme about this little piggy going to market? Well, these little piggies are the piggies that came home, our home. We installed an electric line with an energizer to help train these little piggies to a wire along the hog panel pen. After they were trained, we could open up the panels and contain the pigs with just the wire, which made rotating them so simple. What do we name them? Well, after comic book characters, of course. Sheldon, Peter Porker, and the Hulk got fast after the work of rooting up the soil so we could seed once they moved to their next space. The electrified wire made it easy to put these boys to work all over the front of our property. At the two-year mark on our place, we could have been happy with what we'd made, we could have stayed comfortable, but we learned that's not really our style. So we dreamed up a new space, a space that would allow us to create more films and run our businesses, a space that we didn't have to share with dogs or children. Our shed builders, United Portable Buildings, are nothing short of brilliant and creative. They took our design and created a new studio in just days.
This is a 14 by 24 shed to studio. They frame the whole thing in a workshop, including the loft, windows, doors, and roof, even the interior walls. We match the color to our main house, and even in real time, these guys are masters. The quality is something we cannot get over, and just a few weeks later, the shed to studio was delivered and nestled right behind our main house. With a bathroom and room to work and rest, this serves as our guest house and studio. Back to my beloved primed shiplap from the big box store, and this time we covered the whole dang thing. We would be darned if there was going to be any leaky fridges in this building. We learned that we like luxury vinyl flooring because it holds up to the wear and tear of the country. But no underlayment this time. This time, we upgraded and got planks with underlayment built in. The install was much less fuss, and each board snapped together with ease, giving us so much room for creating. Where the homesteading gets real gritty is when you begin to raise your animals for food. Those little chicks we hatched were the beginning of our layer flock. Now it's time to talk meat birds. Most of us pick them up from the grocery store, but with infrastructure, we could raise our own. So we built an A-frame tractor from John Siskovich Stress-Free Chicken Tractor Book. Our property is rugged in spaces, and this tractor with the chick lift on the back helps us get these birds wherever we need them. The lift mounts up on the back and picks up the back end of the tractor. We can pull the front end to fresh grass a couple times a day. These birds grew out for about eight weeks and then were ready for processing. Pro tip, if you're butchering a bunch of birds with just a few grown-ups, the yard bird plucker is where it's at. This drum can pluck a scalded chicken in just a few seconds. The steps from chicken on its feet to chicken in the freezer are this. Dispatch the bird then scald it over of hot water. Then pluck the bird and bring it to the table for da, 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 eviscerating. You remove the internal organs, feet, and neck, and then into an ice bath before bagging them up for the freezer. After a few rounds of raising and processing our own meat birds, we find that we like a two-day process. So we do everything I just mentioned on day one, keep the birds in super cold ice overnight, and then we bag and weigh the birds on the next morning. These storage bags become vacuumed tightly on the bird in hot water. It's pretty quick. With 40 or so birds, this method makes light work. And don't worry, we'll put all the materials and resources in the description below. We do so much life on these porches. You can find us here just about nine to 12 months out of the year. From school meals to child-led messes that we call art, these gigantic porches are where we make memories. To keep up with them, we gave them a hefty stain and completed the faces on the front stairs as we work our way to a more finished look of the house. All hands on deck when we received two happy additions to our water harvesting system. 
We added slimline tanks to one end of our deck that captures water from the front porch, and another beside the garden. Each of them needed a framed out base with leveled sand and dirt, a much simpler version of the base from our big mamma jamma tanks in the back. Off the front porch, this water collection is so basic, anyone could collect water in a similar way. We ran plumbing fittings from the front porch gutter directly into the top of the tank where there's a small metal mesh to keep out debris. A second round of pigs inspired us to begin our own pig operation. Meet Bill, the cutest stinking pig there ever was. He is the father of our burgeoning Idaho pastured pig herd. A newer breed of pig with the gentle nature of the Cooney Cooney, the marbling of the old Berkshire, and the size of the Duroc. He is the happiest pig and turned out to be a great addition to our growing farm. And this is his lady love, Missy. Most folks who bust out of the city in search of a simple country life are also looking to minimize their variables. We wanted less stress and more freedom. And that means being prepared for tough times and coming out on top if there are none. We entered the world of plant propagation and fodder trees. Willows, hybrid poplars, figs, mulberries, all of these are making up what we're calling the propagation station. These trees will grandfather many generations of trees around our property that will serve as fodder or food for our animals. In the dry, droughtful summer months, these trees give nutrition and nourishment to our animals when hay and feed is hard to find. And the green stuff is just pretty to look at. The ambition here has been high, but we are in it for the long burn. Until this point, everything has been done by hand and small power tools. The seven acres is a beast when you're getting those steps in on foot. So we took a serious plunge and got a big boy tractor to help us beat back the forest and manage the property more efficiently. This was a huge shift in the game in stewarding our land well. Our heart is that this land will leave a legacy for our children's children. I was like, I think we are done. Having I, kids. I think we are like, we're gonna cap it off at four kids. But you left the door open and you said, unless you think we're not done. I wonder if this is the longest three minutes of people's lives. That one went fast. Oh! <laughs> Like I knew. When we moved to this property, we were a family of six, but God moved our hearts to make room for one more Brotherton baby due the next spring. I felt terribly sick my first trimester, so we did the only logical thing and bought a milk cow. We found Goldie at a nearby Jersey farm and this girl was destined to be ours. Equipped with some more Justin Rhodes plans and help from the School of YouTube, we built a stanchion. This would become the home base for our morning routine, milking out our cow. We decided to calf share the milk because jerseys produce. Even now, a year later, I can't find the words for the majesty of cows. It's a dream I never dared to have. Now, before I paint a glamorous picture of cows on green pasture with no trouble in sight, 
Allow me to share both the bad and ugly of raising animals. Bo dreamed of the barred rock for three years, a beautiful dual purpose bird that lays eggs and yields lovely meat when the laying days are done. Tragedy struck when our flock of 18 barred rock chickens were massacred just one week away from joining our regular layers. Our awesome chicken tractor that has never had an issue. Evidently it ate through here and then found a way to open this thing up. We never learned just what attacked this flock so violently killing each one and eating none. But we did learn to never use chicken wire on a tractor. It seems like in the city that when we completed a project, it was complete. On the homestead, when we complete a project, there's just another project. Inside the main house, the kitchen table needed room to grow as well. The secret sauce to this table? The base is just a basic kitchen sink cabinet from a big box store. We built an island and used my favorite primed beadboard as the facade. The leaf at the end adds an entire seven square feet to create seating for eight. We installed electricity so we could do more in our kitchen, like make butter. Another perk of that pregnancy panic purchase we call Goldie the Milk Cow. Cows, pigs, chickens, these things round out our meat and dairy around here. And in all honesty, the animals have been easier to keep up than growing produce. It turns out systems like drip irrigation on a timer really make all the difference in growing a garden. Before this, we were running sprinklers when our plants really wanted watering right at the roots. We made a much more sustainable solution with this drip irrigation system right inside our main garden. Get ready for the cuteness. Remember the chillest pig ever and his lady love, Missy? Well, they got busy, and three months, three weeks, and three days later, the most adorable piglets were born. I mean, come on. We successfully bred, raised, and sold two female Idaho pasture pigs. They went on to new homes, and we felt like real farmers. As pregnancy drew to a close, there was no way we were going to manage a big garden with the effort it would take over the spring and summer. So a closer, smaller garden, just off the side of the house, came in the form of these swanky garden beds. Kids helped us put them together, and we layered it like a lasagna with organic matter. Here, we grew tomatoes and peppers and perennial herbs. This will be the site of a much larger kitchen garden with quick access as we expand our veggie production. Speaking of expanding, Georgia Elliott was right on time, adding a new purpose to our shed studio. This space also became our birthing suite. This was our first home birth, and it was nothing short of magical. We have a theme here at Better Together Homestead. Build something once and make sure it can do multiple jobs. So what makes more sense than building a cow pen for a jersey when you're newly pregnant? Repurposing it for a bull calf when you have a newborn, of course. I honestly can't believe how well this went. We had a new baby and our heifer calf was just too big to be nursing Goldie anymore. But if we stopped nursing Goldie with the heifer, that meant we were gonna have to milk twice a day. And to us, that was impossible with a newborn. So baby Georgia was two weeks old when we brought home one week old Taco. Goldie grafted him like a mother. She is a champ and he knew just what to do. This method of keeping a family milk cow has helped us manage our time and our resources. We'll raise taco for, well, tacos and burgers and steaks, and he will help us with manure and nursing Goldie to keep her healthy. And maybe, just maybe, allow us to take a weekend vacation every once in a while. We did what we could to keep this as short as possible, and some of you might have even more questions. So I've included a list of our materials and some free resources below. And if you love this, check out this video time-lapse to see how we built our home, or this video for a full tour of our seven-acre homestead.